thank you very much, uh, friends, for that welcome. I'm very uh, grateful. Can I just start off by uh, putting the record straight? I've had a little bit of flack since I introduced myself at UK Party Conference as last man standing from the Independent Socialist Republic of Edinburgh South. Let me just make it quite clear. The reason it's the Independent Socialist Republic of Edinburgh South is because Her Majesty the Queen hasn't yet responded to my letter to be Head of State. So I hope that clears up uh, the problem with that and the flat that I received. Look, it's wonderful to be in the fair city uh, of Perth. And I want to start by saying a very heartfelt thank you for everything you did for this party during the general election, for your tireless campaigning over the last two years, for continuing to campaign right up to the Scottish elections in May. Thank you for everything you do for our party and our country. We know when times are good and you're heading to victory, it's easy to head out day after day to knock on those doors. But the measure of real commitment comes when the odds are stacked against you. I know that is what many of you felt during the election. But you kept going because you believed in the better future that was on offer with a Labour government. So thank you for your determination and passion for the cause. It's that passion and determination, that belief in our values, that ensures we can win again in the future repaying the trust of the 700,000 who voted Labour and regaining the trust of those who didn't. Friends, let us do all we can to renew our great party in Scotland and across the UK so we can build for the next Labour government. And let us do that in a spirit of unity with our new leaders, Kezia Dugdale and Jeremy Corbyn. as we now affectionately call them, Kez and Jets. <laughs> and I know Jeremy's listening backstage, and I hope he does realise that most Scottish members only voted for him because of the marketing potential of his name rhyming with Kez. <laughs> Maybe he can tell us when he comes out. In Westminster, Jeremy has built a broad team of talented people from across the party. And I have to admit, people who in the past haven't always agreed with each other. But whilst Nicola Sturgeon wants to say that debate within the Labour Party means division and weakness, that every party should be like hers, no debate, no speaking out of turn, no alternative of opinion. Well, First Minister, you're going to see this weekend that debate is, was and always will be one of our greatest strengths. It is what the Labour Party is about, setting aside our differences, finding our common ground and working in unity towards a common cause. And that common cause is a fairer society delivered by a Labour government. <laughs> Jeremy, the Scottish Labour Party stands with you to deliver that. And what can I say about my friend, Kez? She's had a wonderful start to her leadership. Kez won an overwhelming mandate for the leadership of this party because we saw in her a leader of talent, of conviction, and of principle. This weekend, that is exactly what the people across Scotland will also see. And look at what she's done in just a few short months. Renewing her party by calling on the best people in our country to run for Scottish Labour, saying once and for all that decisions about this party and what we stand for will be made here in Scotland and doubling our membership. This weekend, we want people to take a fresh look at our party. And when they do, they will see us united behind Kez and Jeremy, focused on the things that matter. They'll see us focused on their jobs, their schools, their hospitals, and their families' future. Conference, when I was returned as the party's only representative in the Commons in May, I felt an incredible weight of responsibility towards my constituents, this party, and to all those who woke up with an SNP MP and a Tory government that they didn't vote for. I want to show them that no matter what the SNP say, the only alternative to Tory austerity is this Labour Party. And we know why that is. 
because the only party of progressive change and fairer government is this party. Fairness and progressive change, they are the core of our vision. A vision of building a nation where each generation can pass on to the next a better and fairer place to work and raise a family. That's the Scotland we all want. And that's what Scotland has always stood for. The idea that if you work hard, play by the rules, contribute to your community, you won't just scrape by, you'll get on. Conference, I want to tell you a story about an ordinary Scottish boy from an ordinary Scottish family. This little boy was born and grew up in a deprived area. He had as much talent and potential, if not as much opportunity at the start of his life as anyone else. He had a supportive and loving family. By the age of nine, he had to deal with the death of his father. It was a horrible time for the family. But his mother pushed through, determined to give her young sons the best she could. She worked all hours, made ends meet, and told her two sons over and over again that there was nothing in life they couldn't achieve. He grew up. He went to a state school that was in one of the most deprived areas of the city. But he got through school with good results. Why? because the school may have been deprived of resources, but it wasn't deprived of teachers who inspired, supported, and encouraged him. Thanks to those teachers in that school, he got to university, the first ever in his family. He graduated. He worked temporary jobs before packing them all in and going it alone, starting his own micro-businesses. While they got off the ground, he moonlighted as a receptionist to pay the bills. And like most startups, things didn't always go smoothly or according to plan. But after a few years, he was broadcasting on the internet, renovating buildings, turning them into bars and restaurants, and doing everything from running the accounts to cleaning the toilets to making the payroll. Conference, that could be anybody's story, but it just happens to be mine. And it's probably a lot like the story of many of you in here today. It's a story that reminds us that no matter who you are, where you are from, or what you believe, you can succeed. My only problem was I jacked it all in to become an MP. <laughs> If Matheson surveyors are watching, I'm hopefully a better MP than I was a receptionist, although that doesn't set a very, a very high bar, I have to admit. And if it wasn't for all those things I mentioned, the support at home, inspirational teachers and dedicated mentors, then there's no way I'd be standing here today. I want everyone to have the opportunities I had. The better nation I want to build is one where anyone from Western Hills or anywhere else in this country, regardless of their circumstances, can get on. That is what this party is about. And that is why we wake up every day frustrated at our UK and Scottish governments abdicating their responsibility to level the playing field. <laughs> They're failing to make sure we really have equality of opportunity in Scotland. Conference, we should be proud of Labour's achievement in reducing poverty and let no nationalist or no Tory rewrite the record of what Gordon Brown achieved in government. Inequality and poverty in our society fell considerably during the last Labour government, but it is still persisting. And it is the children in the kind of area I grew up in who are bearing the brunt of that. According to Oxfam Scotland, Healthy life expectancy for the most deprived men and women in Scotland was 20 years shorter than in the least deprived areas. 20 years, conference. Just think about that for a moment. Geographically, within Scotland, we have parts of the country that appear in the top 10 richest parts of the UK and also the bottom 10. Some of them nestling next to each other, poverty and prosperity side by side. In total, Three quarters of a million of our fellow Scots are living in poverty. I say this is an affront to our common decency. <laughs> Conference four families in Scotland are wealthier than the entire poorest 20% of our country. Economic inequality inhibits educational attainment, creating cycles of poverty that spiral down from one generation to the next. That is neither right nor fair, and it shouldn't be the next generation's inheritance. And these are the problems that all of us in here came into politics to solve. 
The Scottish Parliament has considerable powers already over most of Scottish life, but Labour has always been the party of continued devolution. I am proud of the part we are playing in bringing more of these powers to the Scottish Parliament as the driving force behind the Scotland Bill. As well as new powers over income tax, the Bill will transfer over two and a half billion pounds of social security spending, full control of benefits like carers and disability allowance. And if we get our way in the House of Commons next week, the ability to create any new benefit in any devolved area and to top up UK benefits. Conference be in no doubt, when the bill returns to the House of Commons a week on Monday, I will do everything I can to seize this opportunity for Scotland. And I say to the Tories this afternoon, the government amendments that you place to the bill next week have to deliver what was promised. You are all in last chance saloon. And if the government accepts our changes, we'll have the power to create a new social security system in Scotland that responds to our circumstances. We'll have the power to deal with the deep problems of poverty and inequality in our society, to make good on the promise ourselves that everyone should get the best start in life. They will be powers that will allow us to take a different path. That is the powerhouse parliament we were promised, a Scottish parliament fit for a modern and progressive Scotland, a Scottish parliament with the powers to make a difference, the Scottish parliament that people of Scotland deserve. <laughs> But it must be powers for a purpose, friends, and Labour would use these powers to level the playing field for our children. And to do that, we need a government that isn't going to turn their backs on those born with the odds stacked against them, as this Tory government has done. With a bare majority of just 12, the Tories are intent on destroying everything that we built in government. They've launched a cynical, brutal, ideological attack on everything that we came into politics to do. In the last parliament, we had a bedroom tax, but nothing could prepare us for the Tories' work penalty. Tory MPs trooping through the lobbies to cut the very tax credits that before the election they promised to protect. How can you reduce inequality when you take away the very mechanism from three million families that makes work pay while giving one billion pounds to the richest 40,000? And conference, let's pay tribute to Labour's members and especially Scottish members of the House of Lords who stood up for the poorest in our country and forced the government to think again. Thank you. Thousands of working people will never forgive or forget the Tory Chancellor who broke his promise and cut thousands from their incomes amid false claims they would be better off. The Chancellor of the Pasty Tax, the Caravan Tax, the Churches Tax, the Granny Tax, the Charity Tax. Conference, it's Omni Shambles to Judgment Day. And let's not forget George Osborne's spokesperson in Scotland, Ruth Davidson. Ruth wants people to think that she's the friendly face of the Tory party, the heir to Annabelle, if you like. She comes out against tax credits at the same time as one of her MSPs is flying to London to vote for them. She thinks a cheery photo op can distract people from her policies. Problems with the Tory budget, jump on a tank. In trouble because of tax credits, get your hands dirty on a steam engine. Economy not picking up, give the bagpipes a go. Well, Ruth, I have a couple of suggestions for photo opportunities. Get on your bike or take a hike because the people of Scotland aren't going to buy your spin. <laughs> and conference, of course we need to show people that we will defend the interests of those who are, need help. But we must also champion those who want to start a business and invest in new ideas. I started my own businesses because I got interested at school through Scottish Young Enterprise. It was a great way to see how business worked and the opportunities it could bring. My first real business was supported by the Prince's Trust through affordable finance and mentoring. This made it much easier to start and develop the ideas that allowed me to enter the business world, eventually employing dozens of people. 
conference, small businesses are the backbone of our economy. They create the jobs, the opportunities and the wealth that we need to get on. They instill social responsibility and they drive social mobility. Having run a business, I know that good business values are good labour values, and good business values are also good trade union values, and these values in turn are good for society, because we cannot redistribute the wealth if we don't have it to begin with. So we need to seek out and support Scottish industry, and friends, mark my words, we will stand shoulder to shoulder with the steelworkers at DL and Clydebridge until the sun goes down. And we must also support the technologies of the future. The grassroots entrepreneurs who want to stay in the community they grew up in, grow their business, prosper, and then give something back. The tech entrepreneur who needs access to investors to get their idea off the ground. The wonderful university spin-out companies. We're a small country with a powerful devolved government. That government needs to be doing more to support small businesses. There's a system of business support in Scotland, but it's too broad and not responsive to changes in the economy. It needs to be more consistent and more flexible. And cuts to local authority budgets have had a knock-on impact on small businesses, especially with the many areas still recovering from recession. We need more decision-making and budgeting powers devolved to local authorities so they can adapt to suit the needs of their local economies. Conference, as part of the UK, we have an uninhibited access to an internal market at home and a single market in Europe. Staying in Europe helps us to fulfil our potential as a great innovation nation. And Labour will lead the fight to keep the UK and Scotland in Europe. Conference, we have been a great innovation nation before. We invented the tyre, the television, the telephone. We can build on that history and we can go much further. Scotland has so many assets, world-leading universities, centres of scientific excellence, pioneering food and drink, creative and renewable technologies, the power of our wind and sea. But our greatest strength has always been our people and their unrivaled capacity to imagine and to innovate. We must place power in the hands of our people to build their own business and forge their own path in life. That is why we support the City Deals for Scotland. And let us pay tribute to Gordon Matheson for delivering the City Deal for Glasgow and to Frank McAviti for what he will do to make that a reality. Now the UK Government must act on city deals for Scotland's other great city regions, Inverness, Aberdeen and Edinburgh. That's why we must support and spread wonderful initiatives like Entrepreneurial Spark that allow our very best to innovate, develop and grow their own companies. The limits of Scotland's potential should only be limited by our imagination. That way we create the jobs of the future, compete in the global marketplace and punch above our weight economically. Conference. Today we are just months away from next May's elections. We have a big challenge ahead of us and we are up against one of the best funded, most organised and disciplined political parties we have ever faced. The First Minister demands she be judged on her record. She should be careful for what she wishes for because that is exactly what we are going to do. She runs a government that waxes lyrical about the powers it doesn't have, but is definitely, definitely silent on the powers it does. Well, my country, Scotland, is far too important to me to leave in the hands of the SNP. Because unlike them, my focus is on making the life of every Scot better so that they can fulfil their aspirations, their hopes and their dreams. The mission for this party is to show the Scottish people that this is best achieved together. Nicola Sturgeon told people that electing them would mean a strong voice for Scotland. She said that the SNP would use whatever influence it had in the interests of people not just in Scotland but across the whole of the UK. But conference, here's the reality. While Labour have been fighting for the rights of workers and unions across the United Kingdom, what have the SNP been doing? They have gone through the trade union bill just opting Scotland out. Just Scotland. How is that for solidarity? 
Live in England, tough. Live in Wales, tough. Live in Northern Ireland, tough. Conference, let me be absolutely clear. The Labour Party will oppose the trade union bill for every worker, everywhere. It's simply called solidarity. And make no mistake, the entire strategy of SNP MPs at Westminster is to destroy the Labour Party with the help of their friends, the Tories. Well, my 230 Labour MP colleagues from all across the UK are right behind me and this party, and we will not stand for it. Every member of the Shadow Cabinet knows that we are fighting for a better country from the south of England to the north of Scotland. It is Labour only Labour who are the real opposition to the Tories. Wherever you live, we will stand up for you. That is why there is only one progressive alliance across the UK, a progressive alliance of working people in the Labour Party and the Labour movement. Conference, let me conclude with a message. So no matter how dark it seems, no matter how hard we need to work here in Scotland to give Labour a stronger voice, we have to remember that there are people here and across the UK who are behind us. They are behind us because they know that the fight for a Labour majority in 2020 has to run through Scotland. And conference, we have to be confident in our arguments. Confident in defending solidarity and working together across the United Kingdom. Confident in standing up to the Tories and their assault on working people. Confident in our principles and values and knowing that we stand on the firm foundation of a Labour movement built over a century ago. This weekend we want people to take a fresh look at the Scottish Labour Party and see a party that is confident in our ability to deliver. We know what we have to do. Working for the people, their living standards, their jobs and businesses, safety on our streets, standards in their schools, care in their hospitals, putting power in their hands to lead the lives they want to lead. Our fight is for every skilled worker who is put out of work into destabilising unemployment with no outlet for their talents. For every entrepreneur whose potential lies untapped because they can't get the support that they need. For every child in every community across Scotland to make sure they get the start in life they need. This is the future we want. This is what we are fighting for. This is what is worth fighting for. A Scottish Labour vision, a Scottish Labour future, and a fresh start for Scotland. Thank you.